Adam Grand Mason, better known as Adam22, and the host of the popular hip hop podcast No Jumper. Throughout his career, he has interviewed many influential and recognizable artists, such as Juice World, Little Yachty, and his most iconic guest episode with XXX Tentacion. Although Adam has been involved in several controversies throughout his career, and one of the most significant ones involved allegations of being a pedophile, a history of sexual harassment, and misconduct. As of recently, Adam has been accused yet again. In the clip, the guest is accusing Adam22 of predatory behavior that went viral across social media. The video has amassed over 10 million views on Twitter alone. The podcast host has since deleted the interaction from his official platforms. However, followers screen recorded the same video and uploaded it online. Adam22 was accused of being a pedophile after talking to a 16 year old girl when he was just 21 years old. The No Jumper host had attempted to defend himself by stating that he only spoke to her for five minutes before deleting the conversation. So look, bro. So pretty much. So look, bro. I can't look. I, 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 I'm, I'm a, I'm a purr buster. I catch, I catch online pedophiles. So we, we talking about the whole lust situation and everything. But I'll be a hypocrite if I don't address the situation that happened with you. There is no situation. The one where you was messing with the 16 year old girl. article says I'm going she was on. 19 when I met her. She was 19 when you met her? Yeah. The you, article says it. So, but what did you say? I said that I spoke to her on the phone when she was 16 before I realized that she was... Uh, she was that's, how we, that's, yeah. how that's, that's how we catch a lot of stuff. That's how we catch him. She didn't even know that she was doing something fucked up. But it don't even matter, but that's how that's we catch him. You feel like you were going to come on my platform and expose me, though. Like, why no, it, 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 it was just in the midst of the conversation. It was in the midst of... He, he didn't... Hey, he, he, it, it's not on him on nothing. It was in the midst of the conversation. You came on my platform and spread lies like that? Lies? Lies. Is it lies? I mean, you could have done some research and figured out anything. Did you talk to her when you were 16? For like five minutes when I was 21. I'm 39. You was not 23? So for starters, most people are confused as to what is happening, and to be fair, this case is rather strange, and there are a lot of conflicting statements. So I will do my best to untangle this confusing tale. So there are two separate women, who had accused Adam of SA and other misconduct. The story starts in the early 2000s, on a blog post, he admits to linking up with a 16-year-old girl by the name of Desiree. The story starts when Adam was 23, and he was talking with Desiree, he met her through the internet, and she had a reputation for being, to say the least, a promiscuous person. Desiree was stated to have linked up with several musicians and people would post their experiences on the B9 board that was a board for hardcore music fans. So she was relatively known in the community, and she would later meet with Adam. During the blog post that Adam posted, he states that he wanted to hook up with Desiree, fully knowing that the law would be against it, so he knew that it would be statutory rape. In his words, he says, if statutory rape is bad, then I don't want to be right. Which for starters, what the fuck? In the second, this does look very bad, no matter how you look at it. Adam was clearly aware of the potential consequences, but would state that he would still carry it out, regardless. Adam would later respond in 2018 in a tweet where he would write, it's fucking sad how all it takes is a completely fabricated story from 10 plus years ago to fool so many people. I've got all these old emails from her about a relationship and zero mention of abuse or rape. I would link an email he had with Desiree, an email talks about her relationship with Adam, and never once mentions anything about SA or abuse. This can be taken in multiple ways, but people were hung up on the fact that Adam had a relationship with a minor when he was an adult. Adam claims that she was legal age when they did hook up, and to be fair, this story is contradicting because in his blog post he mentioned statutory rape laws implying that Desiree was a minor. Either way, the story could be misinterpreted and the blog post was Adam, where he had just poorly worded everything and it makes it seem more sus than it should have been. The case probably won't be solved since there isn't enough evidence to conclude everything and not to mention that Desiree did respond to him and gave her side of the story, never once mentioning any predatory behavior. In conclusion, there is no right or wrong answer to this since there is no clear picture and the only reason we know about the blog post was because somebody archived the blog post before it was deleted by Adam himself. Adam didn't only have one, but two allegations against him and the second one happened in 2005 when one woman who went by the name of Jane, this is a fake name by the way since the victim wants to be kept anonymous. So the story starts in 2005 when Adam met Jane on a message board where both would be frequent users. They eventually decided to meet up in Manhattan, and Jane would follow Adam back to his apartment. 
During her stay, Adam would make advances, and it soon got too uncomfortable for Jane as things kept going. Understandably, Jane was stressed out, and under pressure, she would freeze up as Adam would take advantage of her. Afterwards, she felt awful. After things ended, she said that she was crying at the subway on her way home, and Jane would confide in a friend about her assault, and that was a wrong call. Said friend turned out to be a mole and told Adam what Jane said. So Adam would be quick to post on the public forum they were both in, and would proceed to call her a liar all over the forum. This was a stressful time for her, however, as she was humiliated and people didn't believe her when she would bring up the story. People were quick to call her a liar and they would slut shame her, so this story would be lost to time. But Adam could not keep to himself, so he would make a blog post in 2009 titled, the time a girl accused me of rape, which would talk about the relationship between him and Jane, saying that the things between them were consensual. Adam goes on to talk about his story with her, saying that everything was consensual and they decided to make a false claim, according to Adam. Both cases are terrible and if true, Adam shall face the consequences for this, but this seems to be a he said she said scenario, which we will never know, whether people believe him or not. This case has a lot of screenshots and a lot of accusations with not a lot of context to the full story. Either way you look at it, this story is not complete. Adam vehemently denies allegations and states people are twisting his words from the blog post he made years ago, which he claims to have been done in poor taste. But people have been coming out of the woodwork and calling him out for his behavior, as well as telling their story of things Adam has done. Little Pump claims that Adam was hooking up with girls who were the same age as Little Pump when he went on tour. During this time, Little Pump was 16 years old. There could be some truth to it, but we would not know if his accusations aren't true. People are not on his side. Joe Budden questioned Adam for the Desiree story since Joe thought that it was strange that Adam would meet her when she was a minor, and then at a later date, would hook up. There seems to be an inconsistency that Adam hasn't yet explained especially dealing with a girl that young, number one, but they don't know shit about shit. They don't even know when they're putting somebody in danger, according to you. You said the girl was from wherever she was from, so she didn't know what she was doing, but you knew what you were doing. You said, right. I knew what I was doing, so I got away from her. Well, right. you, you didn't get away from her if by the grace of God, she ends up back in your life while she's now of age, you're spending the night at her fucking mom's house. What type of white boy pervert shit are you? What are you talking about? What What is the pervert shit about dating somebody once they are legal and of age? And he also says that one thing that could happen is that the victim could have gone on without thinking that the relationship was inappropriate. Joe also calls out the fact that Adam was close to Desiree and the fact that Adam just happened to see Desiree years later by coincidence. That interview made Adam look terrible, and Joe was to say the least surprised about the incident since there were a lot of inconsistencies and at the same time he seemed to dig himself into a deeper hole. So people have turned their back on Adam and he was dropped from Atlantic Records after these accusations came to light. So even if the accusations are fake, his business has taken a toll since he probably lost a lot of connections. Both Adam's co-host Tyrell and AD announced they would resign from the No Jumper podcast and they both have parted ways. Either way you look at it, Adam will lose a lot from this, especially since accusations like this won't go away. Adam won't be gone as his podcast still has a very strong fan base, and people are not really going to leave him, but he did lose a lot of his connections, and this will have a lasting impact on his reputation.